Hello, everyone, and welcome to the September 2021 End User Technology Radar. I am excited to have here with me today the Technology Radar team, uh, featuring representatives from organizations such as Allianz Direct and Discover Financial Services. And today we're going to have a look through the technology radar that they've produced over the last couple of weeks. So let me just start by sharing my screen. Very quickly. Just a bit about myself. Uh, my name is Katie Gamanji, and currently I am the ecosystem advocate at CNCF. My mission is to make end users successful, but at the same time to bridge the gap between the adopters and the projects within the ecosystem. You can find me on social media such as Twitter and LinkedIn for further questions about today's radar or anything related to the end user community. Now, I've mentioned the end user community, and I'd like to maybe provide a bit more information of what it actually represents. The end user community is formed of more than 155 organizations that use cloud native technologies to build and distribute their services. These organizations, we have a wide range of them across different sectors and industries featuring startups, quite innovative and disruptive, and uh, big household names that have been in the industry for many years. The end user community is one of the largest end user open source community out there, and it stands at the center of CNCF's goal of end user driven open source. One of the main initiatives for the end user community is to provide a bit more insights into how they use cloud native, and this is the purpose of the technology radar. The tech radar is something um, which intends to showcase the real usage of cloud native. As such, we're going to have a radar composed of three main rings. And within these rings, we're going to have adopt, trial, and assess levels. Once we actually choose a theme, or the technology radar team chooses a theme, we'll go to the end user community and ask for their feedback. Based on their feedback and votes, we will categorize tools and frameworks in one of these levels. Adopt pretty much means that this tool is highly recommended by the end user community. They have been using this tool in their production systems and it's proven to be stable and useful. The tools that are categorized as trial is pretty much other tools that have, have had success with the end user community and they definitely recommend to have a closer look at those. And the assess tools, uh, these are pretty much tools that focus on maybe solving very specific problems, very specific and small problems. The end user community did POC it or investigated in the past and definitely would recommend for you to look as well if you face the same problem in your organization. Now, before we actually look into the tech radar uh, that we've produced for this quarter, I would like to introduce the tech radar team. So currently we have Sergio and Keith joining us today. Sergio, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Of course. Thank you, Katie. Uh, my name is Sergio Petan. I'm the head of DevOps at Allianz Direct. Uh, I'm responsible for operating and then growing the platform for the whole company. Uh, you might know about Allianz, but Allianz Direct uh, has a little bit of a different identity. We are, seen, uh, we are seeing uh, it's, uh, ourselves as an IT company, a technology company with a license uh, for insurance. And you can see that in, uh, I guess, in our, in our technology stack. Awesome. Thank you for joining us today. And Keith, would you like to introduce yourself as well? Yeah, thanks, Katie. Uh, I'm Keith Nielsen. I am Director of Cloud Architecture at Discover Financial Services. Uh, my responsibilities here are sort of focusing on uh, strategies around how we consume public cloud, the services of public cloud in relation to our private cloud. Um, so part of those strategies are obviously the platforms, the services, how we securely deploy our applications and secure the services of, of public public cloud um, assets that we consume. Um, <clears throat> for those that may not be familiar, Discover Financial Services um, started out as a, a credit card company uh, along with as a payment network. Um, so uh, we're uh, around the globe as, as a payment company, a credit card company, um, also banking. So typical deposits, checking um, uh, products as well. So I'm happy to be here to talk about uh, the tech radar. 
Thank you for being the, here, Keith. Um, as well, I'd like to thank you, the Technology Radar team, for contributing their time over the past couple of weeks to produce this tech radar, and of course, contributing their expertise to the wider community. Now, the theme of this technology radar was DevSecOps. And I would like to ask our tech radar team, why did you choose DevSecOps as the main topic for this radar? Maybe you could link it to some of the challenges you face in your organizations, or maybe some of the tools that you currently use within your organization. Who would like to start? I could, I could start. Because it's uh, something very, very important for us. Uh, we are at the moment uh, uh, at cross check, basically. We are now changing the old uh, CI CD pipeline and really uh, change the, the way we, we deliver code. And uh, while doing that, uh, after a few months of, uh, of exploring, we finally set up on a technology stack and realized that more than half of the technologies that we're using in the, in the CI CD were actually security oriented. And then we said, okay, let's, let's start a little bit and let's see what we are doing. But this is not just DevOps, but like just talking about the DevOps, this is definitely a big uppercase SEC uh, as the DevSecOps. Uh, and, and Obviously, uh, yeah, it started from there. I started a curiosity, I guess, an exploration, and then the realization that and the DevSecOps, it's, it's basically everywhere. Yeah, from, from my perspective, um, when we look at, you know, public cloud consumption, trying to deploy applications, consume the services, I would say more than half of our, our time spent uh, discussing designs it focuses around security. And so introducing security obviously is first of mind for, for any company, but particularly a financial services company. And so trying to balance um, the desire to go fast um, and quickly from our business and our development community um, it has to be balanced against security. So it's a constant um, sort of balance and, and discussion about how we secure these things um, while allowing our business to go fast. And the second part is, is that the rate of change, you know, in this space is, is probably one of the fastest, right? If you look at the, the landscape and the ecosystem, it's, there's new products coming out every day. And so, it's um, it's a very interesting space, but one that's constantly sort of forcing us to reevaluate sort of our security posture and, and balancing that against our, our desire to go fast. Now, this is actually very good insights because personally, I think, especially in the last year, Cloud Native has had a major focus on security. And we've seen that from tag security as well with the release of the security white paper and the white paper on the supply, uh, supply chain as well. Um, as well, in the past, we had a tech radar, which was solely focused on secrets management as well. So again, this is an area of hot interest for our end user community. Now, once the tech radar team chooses a topic, in this case, DevSecOps, what we usually do, we go back to our end user community and ask for their feedback. Pretty much we'd like to understand what kind of tools they use currently, that are related to DevSecOps, if they would recommend them to be used by our organizations or they stopped using some of the tools because they overcome the challenges. So we are actually asking for their votes. And currently we had 252 votes from our end users across 35 tools. The tech radar will only showcase a small portion of that that we can, uh, can showcase within uh, the radar. We had organizations from, again, from different industries and sectors. Majority of them actually categorize themselves as software, which is quite generic, to be honest. Um, but if you look into the size of the organizations, most of them come from large companies, meaning that, again, security is at the forefront for organizations that are operating at, at scale. Now, before we look into the finalized tech radar, I would like to ask the tech radar team, what were your expectations um, when you thought about producing this kind of radar based on your expertise and maybe some interactions with other end users? What did you expect to be the end result of this tech radar? Yeah, I can go first. Um, I, th I think I, I was, what I was expecting is that we, there would be a sort of a consolidation on, on certain um, 
capabilities. I think the capabilities are sort of represented, but the sheer number of products um, is a bit staggering. So um, I don't know if it was unexpected. Um, I would have hoped for a little more sort of um, consolidation, but what, what we're seeing is a highly, I, I would say, uh, fractured um, strategy from, from different companies. And, and that's represented in the sheer number of tools that were articulated in the survey. survey. So um, in one, one respect, I think it, it, it surprised me a little bit, but on the other hand, it wasn't given sort of what Discover um, is facing and sort of um, trying to come up with a, a cohesive uh, strategy as it pertains to DevSecOps. Nice. Sir Justin, you've noted a couple of times there. Do you yeah. kind of align with these kind of expectations? Yeah, I'm 100% aligned with it. Yeah, it's, it's uh, I guess, I, I, I received something else than I was actually expecting. I was expecting to see a different kind of products, different kind of adoption on some of the tools. And I was definitely not expecting to see so many newcomers on the, on the security table and security space. So that's really amazing to see so much uh, so much development going on in that direction. It's uh, We are in need, in a great need for better tools and, and better education around security. So it's good to see that the community is providing you with so many options. It's hard to keep up with, with everything that is being thrown at you right now, probably. But it's always better to have options than, than uh, not to have them. Amazing. Well, I think this is a great segue to present. Oh, I think I one more click um, to present our DevSecOps technology radar from the CNCF end user community. So, in the current radar, we showcase 16 tools uh, across three levels. Uh, in the adopt, we have Istio, SonarCube, Artifactory, HashiCorp Vault, Calico slash Tigera. Terraform, Argo CD, and LPA. And as a reminder, the adopt level pretty much are the tools that the end user community definitely did use in the production system. They are stable and they definitely recommend for other organizations to have a look at. In the trial level, we have X-Ray. So pre pretty much these are the tools that again, the end users had some success with and would recommend to look at these tools. And within the SS, again, very well represented here, we have tools such as Cilium, Harness, Sono, uh, Sonotype Nexus, HashiCorp Sentinel, GitHub Actions, Linkerd, and Trivi. Again, SS tools currently are the tools that are very promising. They are very good at solving one particular problem, and the end user community would recommend you look into these tools if you're facing that problem within your organization. Now, based on the votes that we had from our industry community and the expertise from the Tech Radar team, the Tech Radar team as well um, summarized the Tech Radar using uh, we, we, in three things. So let's go through them in a bit more details. The first one is that the security is the main focus of the DevSecOps, but at the time, it's at the expense of the developer experience. Now. Sergio, I know you disagree with this particular theme, but would you maybe share your thoughts why the security um, is compromised at the expense of developer experience? Actually, why the developer experience is compromised at the expense of security? I, I disagree with, uh, with the lights uh, where we are actually seeing now the security. It's like you always have to compromise something to get, uh, I don't know, a basic, a basic function that is such a security. Uh, I could explain the, the expense of developers experience through the fact that not many organizations maybe realize that they need to hire in, in the dev, DevOps team, they need to hire some specialists that focus on security. And that means that they resources that normally should focus on developer experience. You take them and you focus them on security. And I believe the, the, the security is now seeing like a golden age and, and uh, a big amount of the tools that we're seeing and the options that are currently being developed are giving you the space to, to finally execute on reaching the security that you are always dreaming as a CISO or as a security expert. Uh, I'm saying it more in this, in this light, in a more positive light where, and, and maybe in a more idealistic DevSecOps environment where you can balance the, the development experience with the security narrative. Keith, what are your thoughts on security and the ratio it has with the developer experience? Yeah, it's definitely impactful. I, I would say sometimes at the expense of developer experience, uh, our developer community would probably say always, but um, it's about striking a balance for sure. And I think the tools are getting better 
um, but still there's not a sort of a cohesive sort of uh, prescriptive way to securely develop for the cloud. And the cloud is, is so many things to so many people. So it's hard to come up with just one thing. And, and the, the landscape's always shifting, which also makes it difficult, right? There's a new attacks, there's, you know, new things that we always have to account for. So um, this is pure overhead from a developer perspective, right? Um, but we sort of are uncompromising in terms of our security posture of the public cloud. Um, so um, yes, it's, it's definitely impactful, um, but I think at the end of the day, everybody realizes it just takes one misstep to sort of um, create a, an exposure that can impact you for, for years. So, um, but I, I would agree with this for sure. And are there any tools currently from the, uh, from our uh, DevSecOps tech radar that you would say that uh, are focusing more on the developer experience and maybe bridging the gap between how can we integrate the security, but at the same time, make it easier for the engineers or users to implement the security rules? I would say it's 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 work in progress. I guess the main focus was delivering on the security promise. Uh, for example, even when you when you build a pipeline, then you have to realize that you have different audiences uh, for for the final feedback. Now, uh, so the question is where where do you go first with the feedback? Do you go to developer? Does it have the knowledge and the expertise to figure security, or you completely skip him and you go to the CISO and the CISO has a team that focuses on that? So I guess it's the, the narrative is just just starting to to get there. I guess it's going to be a friction uh, at, at the beginning, and uh, the the developers and the architects of the pipeline will have to make some tough decisions, and then maybe indeed we're going to see some sacrifice also being made in the first iteration. But uh, I guess we are getting there soon. Yeah, I would think there's there's not one specific. There, I don't think the tools themselves make it easier. I think if you look at the public cloud providers and what they're trying to do and sort of create a, an end-to-end -end experience with all of the tooling, I think that's that's the sort of compelling for some companies where you're not stitching individual tools together. But at the end of the day, you, you have a pipeline and you have to automate all of these things, right? Now, the tools have gotten better, you know, fully REST enabled and things like that, but still you're sort of, unless you're going all in with a public cloud or provider set of tools and, and pipelines, you're sort of stitching these things together yourself, right? But the tools have definitely gotten better in terms of how you interact with them and sort of the information they give you back. Um, but there's no simple bullet here. I was actually about to say, it seems like there is not one solution that's gonna fit all of the problems that we have out there. Um, let's move to our second theme. And it's, this one actually mentions that the pace of change in the security space is rapid. Now, you've mentioned previously that there are a plethora of tools currently covering the DevSecOps space and there is very little consolidation. Now, do you, why do you think the security space is moving so fast? I, I would think it, it, it's partially because if you look at the public cloud providers, right, you take AWS, Google, Azure, the major ones, the rate at which they're introducing new services and capabilities um, to the enterprise is pretty staggering, right? So not only do you have to understand how, how to consume those, you have to understand how to consume them securely, right? If you then factor in uh, technologies like Kubernetes, right, which is sort of an explosion of what's possible and things that are running within Kubernetes, then you just have this, uh, this multiplicative factor in terms of what you're looking at and things you have to secure. So not only are you looking at end user capabilities, but now you have to secure them. And so the, the, the security tools are trying to keep up with the services, the services and, and how you host them and run them. And so it's sort of a never ending, you know, trying to keep up with, you know, what, what the public cloud providers are doing and what the Kubernetes environment is doing. So, um, I don't see it slowing down anytime soon, right? The public cloud providers are not slowing. So I don't, I don't expect the pace of change to, to slow at all. So do you want to get thoughts on this one? Would you agree? Yes, I, I, I agree with that. I would add a, a different dimension and that's probably the, the speed of innovation currently and of, of digitalization, right? Because 
Now you have most of the companies dropping their own premise. They move to cloud. They they fully go to to Kubernetes and and the whole Kubernetes environment is evolving so so fast. So you you just uh, find yourself in a place where the old way of doing security doesn't work anymore the way it, it used to work. So you are looking for different security. You have different problems now that you have to deal with. And then of course you have a lot of small companies, a lot of of uh, niche companies that come come forward and give you the solution for the problem that, that you're facing at the moment. And then of course a new cycle enters and then a new space is being discovered. And then you, of course you have to deal with that. So I, I can give you an example is like, like, like the, the Chekhov open source project, right? The, once you do the infrastructure as a code and you declare everything in some, some, some documentation or define it in a YAML file or in a JSON file, then uh, security has a different connotation. You have to look at uh, how, you, how you declare everything, and you need to find the security in your in your in your declaration. So that's that's a different mindset of doing security. Awesome. And actually, here I have a follow up question. So it seems like we have plethora again of tools to cover different small areas where we need to integrate security across different stages, like. You know, in, in the stage we deploy developing application, we deploy it and we actually execute it within our production environments. Now, do you feel like this um, amount or great amount of tools within the ecosystem, does this increase the complexity of integrating security or does it simplify it? I don't think it I, I, simplifies, I, I, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah go ahead, Sergey. <laughs> Uh, it's 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 probably complicating it right now in order to simplify it in the future. I, I would see like that. I mean, now we are like struggling to, to find the best tools and then to integrate it in what we are doing. So of course we're gonna see a lot of options. We are not seeing one single tool that does everything. So that means that you need to first understand the promise of the tool, then you find you need to find an integration in in your technology stack. So. Obviously, the complexity is there. Uh, it is going to be on the shoulder of few, which ideally uh, they're going to manage to to maybe uh, simplify for the whole organization at the end of the day. Yeah, I, I think it, I think it's complicated. It. Um, what I would suggest is, you know, I, I constantly say at our company, it's it's almost more important what we choose not to do than what we do, right? Because there's so much distraction new tools coming out every day. Um, vendors that started in one space are now emerging and trying to get into other spaces, right? Which then allows for a consolidation. So it's a constant challenge, but you need to get started and stay focused on sort of your path um, and get something out the door. Otherwise you're in this perpetual sort of analysis paralysis. Um, it's, it's very easy in this space. Exactly, or at, at the moment you might end up with uh, maybe five tools or frameworks added in your technology stack that do the same thing. And then the complexity comes like who does it best, right? So you need to evaluate the already existing tools and then compare the results. And obviously this also evolves in time. So one that does very, very good today might not do, do as well uh, as today in the future. So it's a struggle to find the, the, the right balance of relevant and not relevant, and then also to make the, the optimal decision on every point in time. So. It's 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 complex. It's a complex situation right now. I would say. It seems like in constant iteration of, you know, increasing that of like optimizing the way you integrate security, but at the same time, you know, make it as you know simple for you know engineers to use it for it as well. Um, and let's move to our third theme. And this one specifies that micro segmentation capability is very important but presents a significant challenge. Now I have a question for Keith because he mentioned micro segmentations first within the DevSecOps uh, radar. So would you be able maybe to explain what do you mean by the micro segmentation capability and maybe go into explaining why it's such a challenge at the moment? Yeah, I, I think, <clears throat> you know, the, the tools and, you know, we're trying to, I think we're painting a bit of a dark picture there's great tools that allow you to actually improve your security posture, make no mistake about it. Uh, this is a prime example. So if you look at things like service mesh, right, things represented on the radar like Istio, right, um, or Calico, you know, from a network micro segmentation, these things started out years ago, right, and sort of are still trying to, to get full traction and adoption. 
they're bumping up against sort of like even you're in the Kubernetes space, you're, you're bumping up against sort of these sort of legacy sort of implementations within your own private data centers where you have, you know, these firewalls that sit in the edge, right? So integrating all of these capabilities within your sort of traditional data centers and being and bringing everybody along for that ride and coming to, again, uh, a consolidated strategy is challenging. So sometimes it's about the tech, but sometimes it's about the enterprise and sort of what you have traditionally done in changing mindsets. So it's not all about the diff difficulty about absorbing tech. That's a real challenge, but it's also, you know, culturally, you know, historically what you've done. So I think this is one area, micro segmentation, that we're bumping up against that, whether it's, you know, API gateways versus service mesh, whether it's edge firewalls versus sort of Kubernetes sort of federated firewall functions with something like Calico. Um, I think there's there's multiple aspects um, to this 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 theme here. Sergio, what are your thoughts on on this one? Nothing to add. Keep uh, as a point here. It's uh, maybe 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 I keep I can keep that something like definitely when when you talk about micro segmentation, especially when you look at the mesh mesh layer, it's it's extremely complex to add it on an already existing system because it, it it's challenging everything that you have. You have to do security different. Now you have uh, a mutual TLS. Now you have rotation of the certificates automatically. Now you have different policies that need to somehow uh, speak the same language as the other policies that you have uh, in, in, in your technology stack. So at one point, you need to consolidate on that and go for one single way of specifying the policy. So. Uh, it comes with uh, with a lot of depth. Once you decide to have micro segmentation, then you need to challenge everything and, and do it right. Amazing. Well, thank you both for your very insightful thoughts on the DevSecOp themes for this technology radar. Now, before we actually uh, conclusion this uh, webinar, I would like to ask about your experience of being part of the Tech Radar team and producing the technology radar. So could you be able to maybe share your thoughts around it, your experience so far? Kate, do you want to take this? <laughs> yeah, sure. No, it was fun. I mean, it's always, um, sometimes you kind of get wrapped up in your own eco chamber, right? You sort of listen to your own thoughts and the thoughts of those immediately around you. So it's nice to step out and see what the community as a whole is doing and hear directly from other people that are trying to solve similar problems, right? Maybe different sectors, but still we're all facing the same thing. So to see the sheer, you know, the survey results and the sheer number of tools makes you feel a little better in terms of, well, <laughs> you know, maybe the challenges and sort of the overwhelming feelings that I have at times aren't, aren't, aren't that bad, right? Because everybody's facing them, right? Um, but it was fun. It was it was fun to to go through this exercise with your with you guys. Yeah, same, same here. I had a lot of fun, and and the discoveries are very very welcome. You don't want to be too original when you do when you choose your next technology stack. So it's always great to to come forward and you know, just present the technology stack, and then listen to the others, and then and then listen to some stories about why some technologies are fine, maybe why support it's sometimes much more important than than the technology behind it. Uh, so these kind of things you'll never get if you if you stay in your own micro isolation, right? So you need to, to expand to the community, and then you, you're definitely going to learn something. You know? It's uh, for us work were like really good. We we challenge our existing technology stack. We looked closer to some technologies that don't look that well. Uh, so it's 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 a step forward for us. Amazing. Well, personally, I did enjoy creating this tech creator as well, and I've learned a lot through this process about the FCCOPs by collaborating with both of you as well. So thank you very much for giving up your time and expertise. Pleasure. And just before we wrap up, um, I would like to mention that we have previous editions of our technology radar that you will be able to find at radar.cncf.io. And some of the themes that were chosen in the past focus on multi-cluster management, secret management, database storage, observability, and continuous delivery. But more importantly, I would like to invite everyone to get involved. If, for example, you have a topic that you'd like to be covered by the end user community, you'll be able to propose it by going to cncf.io forward slash tech radar. 
this is pretty much a GitHub issue. So you'll be able to, again, propose a topic or you'll be able to upload some of the existing topics as well. Now, if you'd like to contribute to one of our technology radars, you pretty much have to be an end user member. So you'll be able to find all of the information of how to join the CNCF end user community by going to cncf.io forward slash end user. And if you have any feedback in regards to today's tech radar or any of the previous tech radars, please send your feedback to cncf um, at c or info at cncf.io. So again, I'd like to thank you to the Tech Radar team, uh, Sergio and Keith, thank you very much for being here with me today and recording this webinar on the Dev DevSecOps Technology Radar. Pleasure. Thanks, Katie. Thank, thank you. Katie. And see you for the next iteration. Bye. Bye-bye.